So people tell me, well, I can't accept biblical creation, though, because of the distant starlight problem. Those stars are so far away, some stars are indeed very far away, that we would think that their light should take many billions of years to get to the Earth. Therefore, the universe is billions of years old, and we have to reject biblical creation. And I would say right away, of course, if you, if you believe that, you haven't learned the lessons of history. You haven't learned that the Bible always gets it right, and it's the secular science of the day that occasionally uh, misses and has to catch up with what the Bible says. Oh, I would simply love to hear some examples where the Bible has overturned science. Sure enough, science can and does overturn science. But the Bible overturning science? You poor deluded man. That being said, you cannot use a light travel time argument to support the Big Bang in favor of, um, of special creation, of biblical creation, because the Big Bang has its own light travel time problem. Ah yes, our old favorite, the false dichotomy. I don't know if you knew that, but the Big Bang also has a very a problem that's essentially identical to the distant starlight problem. The details are slightly different, but in essence it's the same problem. It's called Slightly? Same problem? Early in the universe, in the Big Bang, the, the different parts of the universe, which were, you know, is very small, they started out with very different temperatures. And uh, that's a consequence of quantum mechanics. Don't worry, I won't go into details. But Probably, because you have absolutely no clue about the details. But, uh, uh, they would have had to start out at very different temperatures. And as the universe expands, the different regions of the universe should have very different temperatures. Yet, today, we look at the different regions of the universe, they all have almost exactly the same temperature. Of course, this universal temperature was observed courtesy of young Earth creationist astronomers. We can tell that because we can look at what's called the cosmic microwave background and, that, and we, can see that we can see temperature effectively with an astronomer, we can see temperature. And so there, there's a problem, isn't it? Because it turns out that those different regions have not had enough time, even if we allow 20 billion years, there has not been enough time for light to travel from one to the other. Which means, how could they have come to equilibrium? You see, in order for, for different regions to, to come to the same temperature, they have to be in contact in some way. And so you see, you can't reject one theory because of a problem when your alternative has effectively the same problem. See? You can't say, well, I don't, I'm not going to believe in creation. I don't understand how you can get light from here to here in 6,000 years. I could say, well, yeah, well, I'm not going to believe in the Big Bang because I don't understand how you can get light from here to here in 20 billion years. Same problem. Same issue. That's an example of a self-refuting argument, you see. Same problem? Are you serious? Your problem is reconciling a 6,000 year old universe with galaxies that are billions of light years away. Your problem would require the totally speculative hypothesis that the speed of light is variable by a vast factor. That is totally different to the horizon problem, which is a question of inadequate space-time for an exchange of energy. Have you never heard of inflation theory? If you truly are a bona fide astrophysicist, then you have, and you are conveniently admitting to mention it. If not, then do some friggin' research. Now, the horizon problem is not an argument of a young universe versus an old universe. It is a problem that asks how, in a 14 billion year old universe, can galaxies 20 billion light years apart exchange energy? Now, the conveniently omitted inflation theory addresses this problem, but let's play God's advocate and say it is incorrect. It leaves us with the question, is the universe 20 billion or 14 billion years old? Or even somewhere in between? I know a good estimation, between 14 billion and 20 billion. Yeah, 6,000 years, that sounds right, pretty damn good. I have my own theory. Why be concerned with objects that cannot exchange energy because of distances greater than the speed at which light travels, when there must be many intervening objects in between which are within the horizon in relation to each other. So energy has no need to exchange directly between objects but can be made via intervening objects well within the speed of light horizon. That is Pilgrim Pater's theory. Obviously total bollocks but something I completely pulled out my arse at random. Just like Nephi Boy does. It's quite fun really. So let me sum up here. The universe declares God's glory. We've seen that the incredible size, the incredible beauty of the universe testifies to God's creative power. Uh, the Bible is accurate when it touches on astronomy, and when scrip scripture and secular science disagree, it's not, the, it's not the Bible that needs to be modified. Of course, all you need on the CV of every NASA employee 
is that they have read the Bible. No other qualification necessary. The universe is thousands of years old, not billions. We've seen some evidence that, that are consistent with that. I don't prove it, but they're certainly consistent with that. Funny. I have yet to see one fact that is consistent with the 6,000-year-old universe. How the hell did this bloke ever get his doctorate in astrophysics if he can't grasp the basics? 